what's up everybody? This is Brian and in this screencast, I'll be introducing you to one of iOS 11's most talked about features. That is ARKit. ARKit is a new framework that allows you to perform augmented reality. That is combining computer generated effects and sound mingled with the real world. Probably the best example of augmented reality is Pokemon Go where users are tasked with collecting Pokemon from various physical locations. In this screencast, I'll show you how to get started with ARKit. Now, before we do get started, you should know that this screencast is based on a chapter in the upcoming book, iOS 11 by Tutorials. The sample projects and technical content were written by Michael Cyrus. Thanks, Michael. All right, let's augment some reality. To get started, I have a simple sample project that I'll use to project computer imagery on the real world. When I build and run on my device, I see a very simple view with buttons on it. ARKit is obviously not enabled, so we have to do that now. Keep in mind that ARKit will only run on devices with a minimum of an A9 chip. ARKit will not work in the simulator. ARKit provides an ARSCN view which we use to render ARKit data from SceneKit. For SpriteKit, you'd use an ARSK view. You can also develop AR content in both Unity and Unreal. Being that we are using an ARSCN view, I need to become a delegate of it. I first open Home Hero View Controller and create an extension to implement the delegate methods. Not surprisingly, ARKit is composed of many different parts. First, we have the AR session. This is the brains behind ARKit. The session handles the processes of reading data from motion sensing hardware, controlling the device's camera, and performing all of the image analysis. You can naturally configure how the session interprets data by using an AR session configuration class or its subclass AR World Tracking Session Configuration. The AR Session Configuration only detects rotation of the device, not position. The AR World Tracking Session Configuration provides you with rotation, position, plane detection, and hit, dete and hit testing. Thus, the AR Session Configuration is only recommended in situations when the resources for the AR World Tracking Session Configuration are temporarily unavailable. When ARKit starts processing video, it returns to you an AR frame. An AR frame represents one frame of video and contains data such as the captured image, light estimation, and even an AR camera reference, which is the position of the actual camera. AR frames also include AR anchors. These represent real world position and orientation of an object. You can add anchors to a session to track them or AR session can add them automatically when detecting objects. Finally, the AR frame also contains feature points. These points represent notable features detected in the camera image. At this point, I need to configure my AR session. First, I create a method called run session. Next, I set the current object as a delegate of the scene view. At this point, I get my session object. Since my user will be expecting all the features of AR, I instance a AR World Tracking Session Configuration object. If I wanted to check to see if such a session was available on a device, I can always check with the Is Supported class property. Next, I indicate that I would like Plane Detection. By default, this feature is disabled. Once enabled, the session adds AR Plane Anchor objects and will notify you when it detects flat surfaces during video capture. By setting Is Light Estimation Enabled to True, my device will analyze the room light so it can add any shading effects to any computer generated objects. This will make the generated graphics match the scene. Now I run the session. Once I do this, ARKit will immediately start capturing video. The ARSCN view also comes with a debugging feature to display feature points. In this case, I only turn them on in debug builds. Now in view did load, I add the run session method. 
Finally, I build and run on my device, and look at that. We have AR Kit up and running and providing some feature points on the resulting image. Not bad for a few lines of code. As you can see, AR Kit comes with a lot of moving parts, yet all these parts are what allows you to add interactive content into what is essentially a static medium. In future screencasts, I'll show you how you can use AR Kit to add 3D models, measure distances, and even how to manage errors. We have a lot more coming, so keep watching and thinking about how you plan to augment your reality. My suggestion, lots of pizza. Cheers.